Hi guys, welcome to our Fukushima. I'm Dan, today I'm joined by... Haro and Danny. And today we're going to be doing a little myth-busting video about uh, Fukushima because not a whole lot of people really know what's going on. So let's get into it. Okay, so what we did is we went online and we asked people what kind of questions do they have about Fukushima and are there any assumptions that we might be able to address. And today we're going to be addressing some of these issues and trying to answer some of the questions you guys sent us. So let's get started. Okay, so the first question is, what exactly is Fukushima? Because not a lot of people seem to know what Fukushima is. Right, a lot of people think it's just one small place or they connect it to one event. Uh, but Fukushima is a pretty large area. Um, in Japan, they divide the country into prefectures. And Fukushima is the third largest in Japan, about 14,500 kilometers. And Fukushima City is the capital of that prefecture. It is actually so big, it is divided into three separate regions as well. The Aizu region, the Nakadori region and the Hamadori region. And every one of these regions has like specialties, a slightly different accent and a culture kind of of their own. And it's also interesting to note that Fukushima is quite a common name in Japan. So you might run across a Mr. Fukushima uh, or a company listed under the name Fukushima. And a few years ago, one of these companies in Osaka created a mascot that went kind of viral. Uh, it was the Fukopi egg. <laughs> which sounds a little <laughs> bit... Fukopi egg. A <laughs> little bit dodgy, yeah. A bit. <laughs> Well then, if there are so many names for Fukushima, why did they choose to name the power plant the Fukushima power plant? Right, well they were going to originally name it after the local region that it was in, but because of the time that it was built, nuclear power was seen as quite a futuristic thing. They wanted to boost the popularity of the whole prefecture, so they called it after Fukushima prefecture. Well, that didn't really work in their favour, did it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now moving on to a more serious question. People would like to know what is the difference between the Fukushima incident and the Chernobyl incident? Right, it's obviously completely natural to associate the two and compare them, being the two major nuclear accidents that people know. But the circumstances that led to the accidents are completely different and the output is quite different as well. You might not expect that. Um, in Fukushima's case, it was a lot more lighter materials, uh, cesium, iodine and a lot more radioactive gas, whereas in Chernobyl's case it was heavier materials, um, plutonium, uranium, that sort of thing, which uh, may not travel as far but is uh, more harmful, so it's less harmful in Fukushima. Um, that's not to say there wasn't any light materials released from Chernobyl. There was in fact a lot, including cesium, iodine and strontium, among others, which travelled across Europe and affected a large area. In Fukushima's case, however, a different reactor's design and more safety measures prevented the heavier materials being released into and contaminating the environment. Okay, so we completely ran out of battery, so we're sorry if the angle is a bit different. Um, but now moving on, the question that I think most people want answered is, is it actually safe to live in Fukushima? Right, yes, pretty big question. Um, yes, is the short answer. Um, there's only around 2% of the prefecture that's still uh, under evacuation, difficult to return to areas. But these are very specific areas and they're mostly close to the power plant, of course. But the rest of the prefecture is completely safe. Actually, the recorded radiation of Fukushima city is slower than the world average. Like every place on earth, like every rock, everything from earth has a natural radiation in it. So for example, the natural radiation of Rome, Italy, is actually higher than it is right now in Fukushima city. Okay, so I guess another big question that we got is, is the food coming from Fukushima actually safe to eat? So the short answer to that is yes, it is. Every product that comes out of Fukushima prefecture is either sample tested or fully tested to check if it's safe for consumption. For example, every year 11 million bags of rice get tested in the pre prefecture. 
just to ensure that it's safe. That's so many bags of rice that you can make a line from here, from Fukushima City, to Seattle. And I guess the last question is, are there any long-term health effects that we know of from people living in Fukushima? Um, put simply, no, there isn't. There hasn't been any recorded um, long-term health effects from radiation. So, no extra hands, no extra limbs. <laughs> Now, I say that in a joking way, but on a serious note, there have been multiple studies concerning the long-term health effects on the residents and workers in Fukushima. Studies by the Japanese government, prefectural government, World Health Organization, the UN, among many others, show a very slim possibility of health effects due to radiation. In fact, the more serious effects are due to the stress and anxiety following the evacuation and the completely uncertain situation that many people were in. These indirect effects have been the real problem in Fukushima. Okay guys, that was our myth-busting video on Fukushima. If you want to know anything more about what we spoke about today or anything else you want answered, pop a comment down below and if we get enough responses then maybe we'll do a follow-up video to this. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with what we're doing. We would also really appreciate if you would share this video with all of your friends and family. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.